What is going on ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ecola Espresso and welcome back. Today we're going to be continuing our talks on Advanced Warfare here. Today we're going to be talking a little bit more about the weapons that we saw in the playable demo of Advanced Warfare at Gamescom the past few days. So, we've got a lot to go over and get into, so before we start this one here today, let's aim again for 100 likes here on this video. As I always say, your support is massively appreciated and it's been in insane quantities lately. You guys have been just smashing those 100 like goals. It's seriously amazing, so thank you guys so much for that. But with Without further ado, let's get right into this. So first things first, I just want to say beforehand that the lack of weapons in this video is perfectly normal. There's a lot less weapons than you'd think simply because this is just the playable demo. It's not the final build of the game and certainly not what you'll be getting come November or a little earlier if you're lucky. So if you are somewhat worried about the amount of weapons in the game, don't be. All will be right and just come November and launch. But let's start off with our assault rifles, the furthest left on our create a class option. So the ball 27 is our first option here. This is a weapon we've seen so many times both here on my channel and in the public eye of the game because of just how much it's been sported all over the place in teasers and trailers alike. So this gun is fully automatic and is said to fire faster over time. So if that means the fire rate increases as you continue to hold down the trigger, that will be quite an interesting feature to see in the game. As of right now, this gun is the best in class for fire rate. Whether or not that will change when more options and weapons are available and introduced to the game, that's for time to tell. Moving along to the HBR A3, another fully automatic assault rifle. This one is a burst fire in that it says that the first three rounds of a burst fire faster. So that also is going to be very interesting to see how it plays out. But this weapon is the best in class for handling. Next up, we have the IMR, short for Integrated Munitions Rifle. This is a 3D printing rifle that we've seen so many times before in Advanced Warfare. While reloading will still be a thing, your ammo will replenish even if you don't have scavenger or run over your previous loadouts to accumulate that ammo. This weapon is also a burst fire weapon with a four round burst so my guess is that it'll be like the M8A1 from Black Ops 2 similar in fire rate and build this weapon is also the best in class for damage so I'm guessing we're gonna be seeing it used a lot now although it wasn't listed or playable in the demo we know that the AK-12G will be making a return as an assault rifle in the game we've seen very little of it but there has been footage of it as well so it is almost exactly like the AK-12 in Ghost so if you enjoyed that gun you'll be golden moving over to the SM MGs, we have the KF5. This weapon reminds me a lot like the MP5 and can really be seen in it too by the build. This is of course a fully automatic weapon and it's best in class and range. Now what's neat about this one is that the first five rounds of each mag have increased damage, which is a really cool feature. So make those shots count and be more accurate. Now here's the thing, I reload after every single kill that I have. So it's just how I play. So if this is going to be a thing, that is going to be unreal for people who do the same thing like me. So I'm definitely gonna be interested to see how this one plays out come November. Next up, we have the ASM-1. This one is one of the weapons that we got teased in the behind the scenes press footage at E3 and never really had much info on it other than the name. Seemingly the reimagination of the Tommy gun from the 20s and the mob era, this fully auto SMG has the ability to reduce fire rate as you continue to shoot, but it helps to increase the accuracy of your weapon at the same time. Now as for what it's the best in class of, it is the best in class for damage. I'm guessing this weapon is going to be one that you can range a lot of people with but with its reduced fire rate, it shouldn't be too bad. Finally, for our SMGs, we have the SN6. This one is a fully auto and the first three rounds shoot faster. So it's also the best in class for accuracy. And it reminds me a lot of the UMP from previous titles, though a new futuristic spin on it. Next up, we have the sniper rifle and the shotgun. I say it like that because in the demo, there really only were one of each. So the Morse sniper is the sniper that was playable. It's a bolt action, single shot rail gun. From the gameplay, I say, and the stats here, it looks pretty good, but the thing that gets me is that it's best in class for handling. And if you look at the stats, with a 15 out of 20 in damage and a 14 out of 20 in range, would handling really be your first choice there if you were just to glance at it? So this tells me that we're gonna have another standard issue weapon that is higher in damage and range come launch. But even as a casual player, I'm really excited to get my hands on this weapon just because it played and looked absolutely amazing. As for other snipers, right now all we have confirmed is that we'll be seeing the return of the Lynx, presumably a semi-auto sniper again, and 
hopefully it's got insane recoil to counterbalance the fire rate like in Ghost, but as always, only time will tell. Next up, we have the TAC-19 shotgun. This gun we've seen everywhere, from our multiplayer trailer to the E3 gameplay to teasers here and there in between. This shotgun is a pump action shotgun with no pellets or slug rounds, but rather it is the directed energy weapon. Our sonic shotgun, as I've referred to it many times. Again, the stats on this one are insane, and it really makes me wonder what others will be seeing if it's the best in class in mobility, and has a damage of 16 out of 20. Though, to be fair, the mobility is also a 16 out of 20, and based off gameplay we've seen, it's extremely mobile. So moving over into our final class of weapons here, the new class set are heavy weapons, First up, we've got our EM-1, one of the weapons we've been teased from the beginning. This one is a directed energy weapon that shoots out a constant beam of energy. It has no ammo, but you need to watch it so it doesn't overheat. And one thing with this class set that I really like and can calm the nerves of a lot of people that were worried about it is that the EM-1 is the best in class in damage, all while having only a damage of 12 out of 20. So it doesn't seem like it's going to be the most powerful thing in the world to me. Next up, we have the XMG, which these things just look absolutely menacing in gameplays. These heavy machine guns look heavy for sure, but the special thing about it is that it's only a Kimbo only. So from what I've heard in terms of first-hand accounts, these aren't the greatest things in the world to use, though it may look like it destroys everything, they don't actually. But if you place them into lockdown mode, the range and power do increase. So before we go over into our little bit of secondaries that we have, let's talk primary attachments real quick. A lot of these we've seen already, but others not so much. ACOG enhances the zoom, the autofocus sight automatically zooms in when aiming down sight and your character is not moving, Dual Mags allows for faster reloads, and it says that it also stops the loss of magazine ammo on every other speed reload, so it sounds to me like we're going to be seeing the dropping of ammo here if you don't have this, but then again, I could be wrong on that. Foregrip reduces recoil, the grenade launcher, well, we all know what this does, not an attachment that I'm too happy to see, but c'est la vie. The laser sight increases hip fire accuracy. The lightweight grip will act as quick draw where you can ADS faster. The tracker will allow you to see wounded enemies on your minimap. The thermal is the standard issue thermal scope. Target enhancer has a built-in threat detection capability that will let you see your enemies. Suppressor makes you invisible to radar when you shoot. The red dot is the standard red dot sight for precision. The parabolic microphone, this is a new addition. It allows you to see people with suppressed weapons when they fire, so it's a bit of an equalizer there. It's gonna be hit or miss with the community, I think, in terms of how it's received. The lightweight stock will allow you to move faster when aiming down sight, and the variable red dot is our hybrid scope that we've seen before. It acts as a variable zoom and can magnify your red dot sight by four times. So we do have a ton of attachments, and I feel like those are actually the attachment we'll be seeing come launch. Maybe one or two more added in, but other than that, I think that that might be our full list. But let's quickly move over into our secondaries. In the line of pistols, we've got the Atlas 45, presumably a 45 caliber. This one is also the one that you'll be seeing with the pre-order bonus as well, at least the version of it, since it will be the Atlas LE. It's a semi-auto like normally, and it is the best in handling for its class. So it's gonna be the standard issue pistol. It's gonna be cool to see. Secondly, we have the RW1, a single shot break action handheld railgun. It's the best in class and damage with a 16 out of 20, but the equalizer is that there's there's only one round in the chamber at a time, so after every shot, you have to reload. An interesting take on it, in my opinion, and I'm excited to get my hands on this one personally. And finally, our last weapon at the demo was the Stinger M7 launcher. Its only info is that it's a vehicle or player lock on rocket launcher, which the players being targetable with them, that's a new feature, and one that's gonna be pretty interesting if I may say so myself. I only say this because I'm not really entirely sure how I feel about that. As for attachments on secondaries, they're all pretty standard as well the ACOG offers enhanced zoom, advanced rifling increases the range, akimbo allows you to take two of the weapon, laser sight increases the hip fire accuracy, the parabolic microphone allows you to see when silent shots come from, red dot is the red dot sight for precision, suppressor silences your shots and hides you from radar except for people that have the parabolic microphone, Attack knife allows you for quicker melee, and the target enhancer allows you to have the sight with the threat detection built in. So that's all for right now in terms of weapons and attachments. We covered a lot today, so hopefully you guys did enjoy that. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section down below, which is the weapon you're most looking forward to seeing in the game. But that has been my time, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you guys so much for watching. My name's been Nicole Espresso. So if you did like the video, please leave a like rating down below. Any shares to your Facebook, Twitter, and or MySpace if you enjoyed like that. Always greatly appreciated. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe for the best of Call of Duty Advanced Warfare content. Any new news and information, you guys know exactly where to find it right here up on my channel. 
as I've been saying the past couple days here, be sure to stay tuned here on my channel. I've got a ton of stuff still coming to you guys. We got some awesome videos coming in the next couple of days here. So thank you guys once again so much for watching. My name is Nicole Espresso. As always, if you guys are having a great day, I shall see you guys tomorrow. Take care and peace. Surprise, motherfucker. <laughs>